this is this is this is <laughs> man you look so much like my dad <laughs> but he <laughs> I sorry that's so random all right thanks thank for being you. on Goodbye. joshua thank you <laughs> I'm your father. Um. <laughs> but he has this, he has a certain look to him where he, <laughs> he I like looks, it. He kind of looks like everybody a little bit like Saddam Hussein. Whoa. He looks like Joshua Kemble. He I looks, feel you. He I think that when I, when I, if I grow my beard out bigger, if I'm in certain parts of LA or, or San Francisco or New York, um, people will just start talking Farsi or Arabic to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, uh, I know like one word, but <laughs> yeah. um, I'm like, I don't. I, what I, word? What is uh, it? Uh, Demet Gab means like good job. I learned when I was working in food service in LA um, with some Persians, and they were they were teaching me. But that's the only one I retained. And right. They said, yeah, you're definitely gonna get that when you grow your beard out, um, just because of my look. But I think that's what it is with my dad. Same, you know, he's <laughs> he's Mexican, but he's taller that you know he's a tall mexican yeah same here, <laughs> same here. <laughs> but uh manny patinkin was the other one that like watching oh, yeah. uh yeah. homeland i don't know if anybody watched that show homeland but he was on that and he had a big beard kind of like your beard <laughs> and uh i look like my dad <laughs> shout out art yeah um, <laughs> he straight up fun. got remember remember in the you know like after 9 11 when mm -hmm. when a lot of arabic people would be profiled on, yeah. on airplanes yeah. and stuff. My dad, same thing. People would be looking at him, giving him the, the evil eye. Like, sure. that guy's definitely going to take this plane down. Yeah. It's interesting. It's kind of weird. It's like, it's it's kind of interesting to think about that now because it's not even like a thought right? for the most part. I mean, anyway, we don't need to talk about hey. that. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I totally know what you're saying, though, with, with my, yeah. I, I guess I can relate to that a tiny bit with that um after the, I didn't have a beard then at that time though, in 2001, um, I was still a baby face. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, definitely now I got some salt and pepper or as we call it wisdom in the beard. Um, <laughs> yeah, you look good. You look good with the beard, Josh. I mean, those, those that are listening, you can't see his beard, but it's beautiful. It'll be on YouTube, I think. Um, <laughs> thank you. Wow. This is perfect. But, uh, you know, it's funny because, you know, we, when, when, when we talked last, you you talked a bit, a bit about you started chefing. You're chefing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people know yeah. you as the singer of Dogwood, mm -hmm. uh, the band. And um, we'll talk about all of this. But you were sure. just talking about like learning Farsi a little <laughs> bit in in L.A. Yeah, doing food. So what what are you up to now? Has it changed since last time? I mean, I don't even remember what when we talked last time a couple years ago. So in in person, last time I saw you was when we played together in San Diego and Ventura. Yeah. Right. So that was the when I saw you in person, um, and I was I was independent chefing then. I was teaching culinary arts to different high schools and uh, nonprofit organizations to, for job training and stuff like that. Um, and when I, so because when I was in San Francisco, we moved up there to do a program up there um, for previously incarcerated youth to teach them how to work in the food service industry. Um, get them jobs and then we ended up opening our own restaurant so they could have a place to always work and to do, learn different jobs um and then when I, we came back down to san diego i just went i was just independent freelance instruction you know doing my own gigs at breweries and wineries and just making whatever food i wanted to make while i was still teaching and stuff um now i settled down and got an executive chef job at a, a boutique like catering company here in San Diego and we so we and we've got a food truck so we we go to all the breweries and wedding you know we do all the weddings and events and stuff like that all over Southern California. So what do you do for that? Like so, what do you do actually? Do you yeah. do you make stuff? Do you go out on the food truck? Yeah, I do it all um whatever kind of food stuff. I basically oversee all the executive function of the food service in our mm -hmm. company so ordering and menu building and tastings and uh getting new clients with tastings and uh we're, we're totally seasonal and organic and grass-fed and all that and so um i have to stay up on late, latest food trends yeah but and then one of the things that i was always doing since like san francisco and and here is like specific pairings with like food and music and um if i want to sell a product or work with a brewery or a winery we we pair their product with like a food and a music experience. So like either whether it's a live concert or a DJ, or I just make a playlist that that um, 
pairs makes you pair a sensory experience with with the food you're eating so I'll, I've, I've done it even for like weddings where i'll say here i suggest you play this playlist while we're eating this dinner or something like that so kind of like lets you use all your senses at the same time and it's just something i a niche that kind of, i've kind of developed since i don't know since i guess probably because being in, growing up in the punk rock band and trying to cook cook for people on tour and stuff like that and always manning the grill at the you know concerts and stuff but like um it just became part of since i was doing both at the same time the whole time i think i just i still do that now and that's kind of what i now i just turned it into a, a podcast and have people on talking about pairings and stuff like that so what's the podcast called it's called the the family cast and family stands for food and music is life yes um <laughs> <laughs> so cast. the family cast and then so yeah, I have people on there, whether they're musicians or chefs or bartenders or coffee roasters. And we just talk because a lot of the people like in the industry kind of have some crossover with food and music already. Like either a lot of the coffee roaster friends used to be in hardcore bands or a lot of the bartenders used to be in punk bands or whatever. A lot of even a lot of chefs in town used to be in bands around here locally, too. So um, I know like all the winemakers and brewers are in most of most of Southern California. And so we try to do uh if they want to like do some kind of music collab or something like that or whatever, we, I can I can help suggest some stuff with, you know, I don't know. For example, if somebody wants to release a, a Pilsner and, and or whatever, I know you got you did a couple of beers yourself, you know, um, yeah. so like yeah. that stuff like that. Where if you wanted to do that and they wanted to do a concert and they're like, how do we do this? What if you added food to this event? Like it would, you know, here's the menu that is all puns and or pairings and it's just we just like to have fun with it. Create, it's very creative work, it seems like. I mean, you're talking about you're talking about you went from food to management, basically. You're like managing. Mm -hmm. It's like if you were talking about music right now, being in a band, your part of it would be the management part of it at this point. Yeah. You know, you're making more decisions. You're sort of like making a plan of here's do this, you know, mm -hmm. putting things together for clients and for other i mean that's management right like in a, in totally. a way like executive but it's creative production. yeah well exec sorry executive management no no but, but no uh, not, i don't i don't necessarily care about the title itself but like as far as that part of it i i know of like record label wise or band wise i'd be like you know because i know there's different kinds of managers with the bands and such so i think i would be more of i'd be more like almost like day to day more day to day, -to -day, -to -day, -to -day. yeah mm -hmm. so how did how did you pick up these skills is just along the way did you have to go to school like what what's that path for you look like yeah a lot of a lot of crappy food um, <laughs> um <laughs> you know being on tour um you know uh, across america there's not always the, the good there's not always your first choice of food it's like oh what's here what are our choices somebody's house maybe subway maybe a gas station pizza um and then knowing I, I would always rather choose to eat at someone's house or to, you know, get food and make it because I, I'm in control of it. And you can, I mean, there's nothing wrong with uh, subway was bomb sometimes. Right. Or like talk late night, Taco Bell, whatever. <laughs> but like uh, you pay for that you later. See the pictures from that era. Of, of mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're all, we're rail thin or, or just like greasy or whatever. No, I was not um, rail thin at all. <laughs> I was uh, kind of overweight. Put on. Yeah. But you've been working out. You look, you know, you're looking, uh, looking pretty good there brother i think well, most people <laughs> well, most people i think a lot of people kind of go through a phase like that anyway like in their lives so i had yeah. that phase yeah no totally i was i was actually i was obese overweight in like fifth sixth grade oh you were early i mean i think coming through a traumatic household we kind of like i think i feel like there, if i look back at pictures it looked like all of us kind of went up in weight for a couple of years mm -hmm. and kind of petered off you know slowly got back to normal after a while but i think there was some food trauma and I learned more about that as I was teaching these foster youth and incarcerated youth that, um, you know, if you grew up in an impoverished neighborhood, it's like a food desert almost. There's not, there's no choices of food. It's just like you get the government food or you get whatever food you get at school for free or whatever. And I learned that we have a privilege for sure. You know, you hear this a lot now, but in this particular case, it's true. We have a privilege of how do we, how do we choose to eat in America? How we choose our diet? We, oh, I think I'll be keto for a week or, yeah. Ah, I'm, I'm going to try out veganism. You know, it's like some people are just forced to eat whatever they have or whatever's around. And uh, yeah, hot dog, 7-Eleven mm -hmm. hot dogs every day. Yeah. Them, like that's got to do something to you after a while, you know? Oh, oh, I think it for sure did. Like, yeah. And what it did for me was it showed me that um, I don't want to eat that all the time. And sometimes if somebody says, oh, I want that, I'm like, 
it automatically gives me like a stomach ache or whatever. Just yeah. thinking of it, you know, like that yeah. that part of it. It's like never it's trust like, a skinny chef, they say though. <laughs> I mean <laughs> I mean there aren't they actually aren't that many. They're either in super good shape because they work it all off or they're right. just or they just let it go. You know, like it's just they're just There's no in between. <laughs> not really. I mean, there are some skinny chefs, but there's also because there there's some there's some uh, you know substance abuse happening or something like that. Um not Love. calling anyone out, but it just it just happens in the industry. Just like how you know, much how much abuse drug abuse in in the kitchens <laughs> is there is it is everybody on coke or is it like not that big <laughs> no no i'm not calling everybody out. i'm just saying like <laughs> to, i mean well think about it if you have to work 90 hours a week as a chef or a, a, a manager at a restaurant yeah um how, when do you sleeping when are you taking care of your family you know like things go bad because you're so devoted to the establishment to the job and how do you sustain your your waking life is you might need a little help from from those substances, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I have never, like, I, I never dabbled in that because I never really wanted to, um, I have think, I feel like I have an, maybe an addictive personality and I know that would just go bad for me. Yeah. Um, so I just stuck to, you know, uh, alcohol and beer, beer tastings and stuff like that, whiskey and all that. But, you know, I, I do see it a lot. It's not like 100% of people are doing it, it's, yeah. but it, but it's, it, but it's definitely in there, whether it's, you know, Coke or, or pills or because yeah sometimes it's just for they do it recreationally or for fun but then you know it becomes a problem and a habit and uh it's unfortunate and uh, so i work i i also work with a lot of young adults who have gone through that because they've gone to jail for either selling or um using and i i'm trying to help them get back on their feet rehabilitate and back into the industry in a healthy way and then uh you know Maybe we can go to a concert together and talk about it or whatever, like always involving food and music together because I feel like it's not so scary that way. It's not like, you know, here's everything you need to know about the restaurant industry in one sitting. Go, you know. Yeah, because things are also constantly changing probably nowadays. But, oh, man. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they probably always they always are, but always were. But now it's like, yeah, the prices are going up. The, work, the workforce is going down. So mm -hmm. what's that been like? I mean, it's been a crazy what? I don't know, like two years, a little bit, two years now of, of uh, ups, ups and downs. And how did you uh, feel when, when like everything shut down the first time and you're just like all these restaurants, like, is that like devast? It's, it's equal with mm -hmm. what happened with bands and mm -hmm. stuff, you know, being yeah. grounded from tours. So like yep. you got it double, like not only can Dogwood not tour, <laughs> you can't, you know, like, was that the situation or what? No, you're right. Um, it was at first it was like very, it was dreadful. Like, what's going to happen. Everyone's pivoting, trying to do a new business almost within their business. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people who unfortunately closed their doors for good, um, pivoted to a whole nother business, uh, you know, to go only or, or delivery, but that's only going to pay like a third of what you were making maybe. So yeah, I was, that was really hard. Fortunately for us, for what we were doing, we were still able to, since we had the food truck, we could, there was a, for a while there was a law in California where they had to have food to be open as, at a brewery mm -hmm. or a winery. So we were in demand to be there to help. Yeah. That um, makes sense. So that, that kept us, you know, that's awesome. At, at least the workers busy, not very much income, but it kept the workers busy. And then, you know, people were still doing events and weddings because uh, one, they were tired of waiting until who knows when this will be over. We, we just want to get it done. So they would have the party or whatever. And we stayed distance from them because we're like on the truck cooking their food and they're like way over there. So like we events just kept happening, but, at the same time, there was a lot of cancellations and postponements. And and then when everything came back, it was like a tidal wave of events. It was like, everything's open. Let's go. Weddings on Wednesday night. Weddings on Thursday night. A bar mitzvah. <laughs> a party. You know, like all this stuff is like, whoa, oh my gosh, this is crazy. So now it's kind of like, uh, you know, a roller coaster again yeah. now. So I just try and roll with it and make sure that I'm uh, make sure that I'm staying mentally fit. And, you know, <laughs> um, how do you how do you do that? Man, that's a really good question. Um, well, one thing, creating, staying creative as a creative, like knowing that the music is in my veins and um, or podcasting or anything like that, just just something to keep, not to keep me occupied, but I need to be creating. So I help other bands or musicians write songs or sing, I sing on songs or help produce whatever, give ideas. I, you know, cook a lot. I help people with their menus and you know, producing food pairings for 
like I said, for wineries or not wineries, but like if they're releasing a certain thing or liquor companies or even coffee brunches. So like anyone who wants to do something like that, I just really want to stay active in that so that, mm-hmm. that my, my creativeness doesn't atrophy. And the podcast probably helps with that too. Podcast definitely helps. Yeah. Because, yeah. cause I, I have conversations with people um, that I know, some people that I don't know. So it's my, I'm always engaging uh, my mind and, you know, learning things. And, and I also like producing with like music and stuff like that. Just for fun. I, I'll have my kids help me make songs for, you know, sounds for them or whatever. So like nice. trying to, you know, get everyone involved in a certain way. And um, another Honestly, another way to kind of stay mentally there is my wife is a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, so not that I like ask her for therapy or whatever, but it's like she knows kind of we 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 uh we can talk about things and you know maybe differently than other couples do. I I I mean, she's an art therapist and a marital you know family counselor, so like she's seen it all, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. So she's like, she. I, are you ever like, <laughs> hey, don't try to fix me. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> this is not the time. Um, or like, yeah, she's, That's an, great. she's an art therapist, so I don't really want to like, you know, like leave a doodle lying around the house or something. This is a you know, drawing. What does this mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, no, no, I was just drawing. Um, <laughs> do, do people all, always ask her questions at parties like, oh, you're a therapist? Hey. Uh, Either that or they're like, oh, OK. I have a friend that. Uh... <laughs> Let's just say this person. No, or it's either that or they're like, OK, uh, we'll talk soon or, you know, whatever is like, uh oh, we don't we don't we're scared now. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. One or but, the other. but she's super she's super chill and cool. It's like um, very unintimidating, but it's good. So I don't know. What do you do to stay mentally fit? Um, you, I think talking talking is good. This podcast is is one good and and talking uh just with a friend for a long time like i'll talk to like tom tachilla uh, that's just good you know you can kind of just see oh things are fine you're on the other side of the country mm-hmm. and i feel like just having those conversations with somebody that you feel like completely open with that's mm-hmm. important so it could be your spouse it could be a friend um and it could or it could be somebody you pay you know <laughs> yeah yeah so uh you, you know that you know, I've never, well, no, 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 I'm not gonna say I've never done like therapy or anything like that, but, um, I've regularly done it, mm-hmm. but, um, but I found that just honestly, like I said, just being able to be open and to know that you're not going to be judged. And that's the hard part is like yeah. finding the right person that's not going to judge you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and I don't mean like you should be trying to talk about all your problems to your friend. I just mean like have a true conversation about what's been going on in, in both of your lives, yeah. have, a, have a back and forth. And, and I think that's like, number one, a really great way to stay sane. Mm-hmm. Um, and another thing is like, everybody says, go outside and take a walk, but that truly does change your mood. Like if you mm-hmm. have a headache, it might clear your headache, things like that. You know, it's just, it's therapeutic for a reason. For sure. Yeah. Um, S- serotonin and all that. Yeah. yeah. Sunshine. So aside from that, <laughs> music, honestly, writing music makes me happy. Mm-hmm. And same. It, if I have a bad mood and I, and I know I need to like fix that mood, I'll play music. I'll play, I'll either work on a new song or I'll work on something that I've already written or whatever that I need to practice. But I mean, that just has such an effect on me in a cool way. Totally. Yeah. 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 It's like, ha- like a, a life hack in a way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's basically what you said, being creative, you know, you, you, maybe it's the, the feeling of, oh, you kind of matter. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, maybe we don't matter, but, but, uh, we do matter when we're helping someone, Mm -hmm. we matter Mm -hmm. to them. And that's sometimes all that matters is just totally help one person, you know, in, in life, you know, every day is even better, but you know, it's an ongoing process and struggle and, and, um, Wow, you're a therapist. No, <laughs> <laughs> you just became a therapist. No, I mean, you're right. Um, I think that we, you and I, I mean, we've been doing music since making music since high school. Um, you and I both. Mm-hmm. So, like, um, that's like ingrained in our, our, the fabric of our, our being now is, you know, 40 something dads um, and husbands and people who we are outside of that is this like, there's always a song in my head. There's always music playing in the kitchen. That's why I started making these pairing playlists and like doing these events is because 
I don't feel right if there's not some music somewhere because that's how I was raised in the kitchen with, by my grandparents. I was always by their side when they were making salsas and different long cooked stuff in the, in, you know, they're Mexican cook, chefs and, um, there's always music playing. There's always dancing in the kitchen and stuff like that because so now that's, that's how you, that's how I do it. I tell my kids if, if there's, if they're, if you're cooking without music playing, that's like not using salt on your food, you know, like you're not, you're not going to get the same, Sabor, you're not going to get the same flavor on your foods as you're, you know, without putting that emotion into your, without emotion into your music, you know, um, or into your cooking, I should say. Um, but I was, but back to the original sentence was like, since you and I have been doing it since, since so long ago, uh, um, we are fortunate enough to have that, that <laughs> quote unquote talent or skill, um, because, the people who don't know how to make music or whatever, I tell people, you can, anyone can make music. It's not always good, but you can yeah. still do it. Um, <laughs> just try it. But we, since we know you and I know how to do it, that's very helpful yeah. to be able to go into the studio space and just rip something out or write something or even to organize my desk or anything like that. Just get ready to make something magic, you know, mm -hmm. um, even writing a menu or I, I had fun, like making, making puns out of your, your music, you know, like just different stuff. that's fun and creative that's that's where i find joy i want to hear about these puns <laughs> i want to talk about i want to talk about that i want to talk about hot sauce after that maybe because i love i'm super into hot sauce but oh i got you <laughs> let's talk about these pairings and puns what, what's what's this this is part of what you do but the mxpx version right the mxpx version okay um well you have a you have quite an extensive catalog brother um, <laughs> <laughs> so i had you know, I do a lot of, uh, we do, we also specialize in a lot of vegan cooking at my, my place. And we do, we do corporate lunches for like Dr. Bronner's and we do all their food and it's hundred percent gluten free and organic and vegan. And they're, they're into music. So I'm trying to pitch them ideas of naming, naming things after songs and stuff like that. So, I mean, even, but so going through yours, I was like, wow, I just had a sandwich today and it was a Reuben, which is, you know, pastrami on rye. So I had one on here. I love Where's Rubens, it? by the way. Don't you? I do. Yeah. So I have, I mean, th and, and this type, this song title could work with a couple different things, but I have, that was the Let's Rye. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, Let's Rye. Rye. And that could also be, a, that could also be a whiskey, right? Yeah. Um, um, but that was a good one. And then actually last night I put, I had made a blue cheese dip to go on these, these potatoes. And that was gray skies turn blue cheese. <laughs> So I love I mean, it. it the hits just keep on coming um, cuz uh you have a lot and so you know there's <laughs> there's easy ones like doing time which you know time just being an herb that just works for doing time the, doing the time. herb spelled yes. like the herb. <laughs> time <laughs> yes exactly you know, there's also oh for the on the, what I was saying about the vegan is that you could do plants within plants <laughs> I like it uh-huh and the, or plans within plantains um could be is another like a uh mm -hmm. vegan stuff if so if you're going like brazilian style yeah so or plants, maybe that would be a caribbean style definitely caribbean yeah um <laughs> we, do, we do those a lot and then and then on the blue cheese tip what i just said there's also slowly going the way of the buffalo wings Ooh, nice <laughs> nice so i mean we could i could basically do a whole dinner based on your songs from this list now that i'm looking at geez what did i do bass solo <laughs> oh i love it Bass yeah. solo. <laughs> don't, don't you have to change the spelling you know um should i so so people could yeah if you got more keep them coming. i mean there's there's some there's <laughs> yeah. there's uh i mean going off of different records there's uh responsibility <laughs> nice responsibility <Okay. laughs> and you, i could actually see that on the label like responsibility hard t uh, sure yeah new 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 product coming out mics <laughs> or, or arts Art's hard to hear. <laughs> mm. uh, what, oh, here's one. Here with meat. Here with meat. Here with meat. <laughs> so I, I'm, uh, opposite of vegan stuff. Very, that's going to be a very popular one, I think. <laughs> For, uh, yeah. Especially there... among my band members. <laughs> Are they all meatheads, meat eaters? I mean, No, they just like, they like jokes about meat. Yellow. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I got, well, there's, I mean, we can go back to vegan. We can go bad hair dates. 
Ooh, I like it. Mm -hmm. Bad hair dates. Bad hair dates. That's old school. <laughs> They're like, those don't, they, those didn't sell. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> there's something inside of them. There's, oh, there's something inside. Um, that's oh, not a, a lyric. title. It's a lyric. a lyric. I know. We're I going old. I can hear Andy. <laughs> Andy Husted saying that. Sugar-coated poison apple strudel. Mm. That you you might have already thought of that one because that's that was a no-brainer. But there's there's also think twice cream. Think twice cream. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, uh, what flavor would that? What would that actually taste like? Oh, that's um. It'd be double something, right? No, I'd probably make a I'd probably make a caramel sauce out of your, one of your beers and swirl that in to the ice cream. That sounds good. Yeah, and then whatever flavor ice cream you like, I'd probably just make that happen. We make a lot of ice creams that work for fun, just to try out different flavors with our leftovers or whatever. My my guy just the other day made a a, a Tom Ka like a Thai ice cream. Hmm. That was that was delicious. Tom and, Ka like the like the, yeah. the the like the soup. Yes, yeah. So he had all that like same curry ingredient soup, like in the ice cream. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. That'd so be interesting. I try it because I love Tom Ka, but uh, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. Um, it's like savory desserts. Exactly. So, so you could serve it like, yeah. So that would be, you don't, you don't necessarily have to even finish the meal with it. You could accompany that with a, a dish, mm -hmm. you know, so because of the way it is, um, yeah. So there's, there's more, it could, I mean, the list, the, as the more you talk about the puns and, and pairings and stuff like that, it's like, it starts to just flow because, yeah. because, well, um, you know, the more you know the lyrics and the songs and how how long I've known you guys and the music and stuff like that, it's like, oh yeah, the this lyric or or how do you f how did you feel the first time you heard that song and how did you feel the first time you had this sandwich or whatever, you know? Mm. Let's let's put those feelings together. Or I'm gonna I as the chef host of this event, uh, say we're doing one of your beers or whatever. Taste this beer with this dish, and blah blah. blah. We'll go through the whole thing and then next time they're out somewhere else, they're going to hear one of your songs and be like, oh, I remember I had this dish and it was a beer pairing with what, like 350 brewing or whatever. And uh, I had, yeah. was, and it was, this song was on and the chef was like, now close your eyes and eat this fish and blah, blah. blah. And I'll never forget that experience. So you, you got in, uh, you hear the song a different way, right? Yeah. You, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. so on board with that. Yeah, you're tasting the food a different way. You're drinking the drink a different way. It's like you're not just drinking coffee as a tool to wake up. You're like really experiencing mm -hmm. and using all six of your senses. You have your, you know, your the corn dish is just called ears to hear. You know, <laughs> it's, just, it's just corn. It's just straight up corn on the cob. Um, but it, but 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 you're trying it with this beer that you guys had a hand in brewing or whatever. And so there's already that experience. And then. Uh, you know, you and I are like telling people like, and the reason I wrote this song, blah, blah, is because it ha this happened. And so they're totally remembering all these things. And then, and that's kind of what I train my students to do too, is like really give your diner or your drinker or somebody an experience that's not just consumerism. It's not just listening to your music on headphones. It's like, dude, sit down, touch the glass, drink the drink, eat the food, listen to the music and put those all together again in a new way and let's move on to the next course, you know? <laughs> yeah. I love that. I mean, I love that, that you, you can, you get creative and it starts flowing and mm -hmm. next thing you know, you're actually having fun mm -hmm. working with a client rather exactly. than like the drudgery of like your day in and day out job, right? Like you mm -hmm. can, you have those, I guess that's all we can really ask for in life is those moments of, of, of uh, Almost where you like, you know, when you're having so much, so much fun and it just time flies, right? Like that's, Seriously. that's kind of what, when you're writing a good song, right? When you're writing a song that you're like, this is going to be good and it's going well. And you're like, the mm -hmm. lyrics are flowing. It's similar mm -hmm. to that. You're just like. Seriously. Yeah. The the thought of getting to there is the hard part. But once you, <laughs> you know, once you're there. Yeah. The journey. It yeah, makes The it, destination, that whole saying, like, That's you know? what heals you, honestly, I think, in, in a lot of ways. Mentally, If, if you're going through something, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, totally. like, in a way where you don't even realize it maybe until you're you're already done. You're, you're like, reflecting on, on that. Because life can be so quick, you know, in your, in your job, and you're, like, coming up with ears to hear, and, and <laughs> you're laughing about it. A lot of times, I guess what I'm trying to say is we have a great time living and we don't even realize it. You could get busy living or get busy dying. It's one of those two. Well, 
no, on that note, you're you're totally right about the the journey destination of songwriting and 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 or menu creation or drink curation. Um, I wrote we recently recorded a song and my stepdad passed away in 2020 and we didn't have that good of a relationship. And um, I had written some songs about him in the past, but that was more like my experience with him growing up and whatever. But since he passed, I, I, and I didn't realize it at the time I wrote this song and it ended up being about hit him in a, in a past, like a, almost like a, almost like my way of grieving his loss, even though we weren't close. Mm -hmm. Um, I realized that after I had like worked on the song, it was recorded. I was, cause I was doing a lyric video and I was making the video and I was looking at all the words. I was literally looking at the words that I sang. Right. And then, um, I was like, Oh shit, this is, this is like the way I viewed his life being before, like we met each other or whatever. And, um, but I didn't realize it while I was penning the lyrics onto paper until it all happened. Mike, it was like, this is crazy. This is my, my, well, of course, you know, I had a little guidance from my therapist wife of, you know, trying to say, she's saying like, maybe this is you grieving or whatever, but yeah. it, but it really truly was. And I didn't realize it at the time. That's crazy. It's crazy. And yeah. that, that's how the music heals us. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. That's, that's wonderful. So what, so what's the song called? That one's called standing on the edge. And, um, we, it's not done, um, it's not done being mastered yet, but like I already did, we already did all the work on it to get to that point, you know? So I like to kind of like demo it, do, you know, do, do, do a few, uh, work throughs and demos and changes and tweaks and all that. But, but in, in that time, while, while the rest of the, the studio people and, and, uh, musicians are working on their parts, I'm over here making lyric videos and getting stuff ready to release it or whatever, because that's how I, that's how I kind of like use the song as therapy is like because once you're in you know when you're in the studio and you're on the mic and it's like okay take one whatever you don't keep all those parts maybe or you just get one line right or whatever once i get the cohesion of the song done and just like a menu or anything or in a wedding or any event like that it's like oh okay now i can really see what this is yeah <laughs> i don't I know, know when I, write it, but i know what it is when it's done i know what you mean I, it's hard to explain but like you can you can hear you can sort of hear how it should sound in your head, but at the same time, you can't like talk it out, like how totally. it should sound. You just have to go through the work mm -hmm. a lot of times, mm -hmm. and then and then f go, yeah, yeah, that's that's how I wanted it to sound, you know. <laughs> or it's even better, you know. Sometimes it's better, you know. And and sometimes it's a little creaky. Sometimes ideas can come out like mm -hmm. boxy or like, oh, I thought that was going to be way smoother when I wrote it, but yep, yep. you know, it's just part of the process is like figuring out what what you all as a group can do you know yeah uh, but uh when's the so i of course was gonna ask what's up with dogwood so <laughs> you you uh you didn't you didn't make me uh wait too long but when's this coming out what are you working on are you working on just the single are you working on a, an album that well i don't know um it's so it's it's not not sure it's not even well no it's not technically it's not even dogwood stuff it's just oh. after yeah i kind of just started doing music like I never really stopped writing music. Um, I was always writing music, um, songs that weren't always for Dogwood also when I was, while I was doing Dogwood stuff. And then, you know, as we slop, slowly stopped playing le or we were playing less and less and we did those shows with you guys. And then we didn't do a whole touring after that or anything like that. So I just, but I kept writing songs. So mm -hmm. I was like, Hey, who wants to do some music together? Um, I want to collaborate with other artists that are not you know, not me. I want to collaborate with people who sound different, look different. Maybe, um, I want to, I would like to have more creative input from other musicians and, uh, maybe everyone, maybe somebody send me a song and I'll sing over it. Something like that. So it's not just, um, I just wanted to expand, I guess my, my horizons on, or my, even push my boundaries a little bit as, as far as a songwriter, a creator goes, because, you know, using more stuff like, sampling or, or or like hip hop beats or anything like that not not it's not like hybrid music or anything but it's more like it's not going to be your your standard like you know dogwood tooth and nail record or something like that you right. know and then you know since since it's not like all you know members of dogwood or something like that i mean there's like i've been working with one uh you know one member danny from he was in dogwood and then um a different members from different bands for different songs basically so it's okay. like, almost like it's all collaborative so yeah. like We'll write the, we'll write a couple parts. I'll sing, then we'll get we'll get a drummer from this band to play this song, 
and the bass you know or guitar player from another band or depending on whatever they play keyboards or or spoken word artist or yeah. something like that and then yeah and i just call it i call it saint didicus because it's the patron saint of san diego saint and, didicus yeah yeah okay right so that's, yeah so it's uh her, you know back to the roots of just being being a san diego kid growing up in a catholic family um before before we met this the english stepdad stuff like that um back to the roots and then just totally just writing whatever i want about what's happening now because i write i mean you know we write different now than we did when we were 17 yeah for sure for i'm not sure. writing about i'm not writing about what's happening in high school or whatever and now i'm writing about dang how do i get my kids through life now or <laughs> <laughs> how do I, how do I be a good person now when yeah. everything when everything around us is shit or how do I you know just how do I be how do, yeah. how do how do you be in the world right now when and also when everyone still wants you to write a dogwood song but I'm not writing a dogwood song I'm not writing you know the same stuff that I did for that because that was a thing dogwood was is was a thing you know mm-hmm. and it's and it has a place in my life and in history or whatever and I kind of passed the passed that torch onto other bands when we kind of you know retired or whatever we, it's never totally official but like sure. you know we just did it because there's other bands that are young and doing it and like, want to go out on tour and you know my back hurts you know <laughs> <laughs> so yeah no i mean that's the thing is like i think everybody understands what you're saying mm-hmm. about all of that um especially just wanting to be creative and work with other people and work mm-hmm. with people you haven't worked with before to get yeah. a sound that you haven't done before um People are doing that more now than ever, and, and it's yeah. for a reason. You know, I think it's just experiencing new things and the fact that you can with technology. You can record a record yeah. with a friend across the world, and you can just exactly. send files back and forth. It's mm-hmm. it's pretty amazing. Actually, it's been fun. It's that's that's been the fun part. So, like, you know, we did we've done a couple songs so far that are out, and then we're really working on this new set of songs because we have the same few musicians on the songs. So mm-hmm. it'll be like there's no label pressure. There's no you know management company or anything like that it's just like we want to make music and uh just want to put it out so like i have no obligation for money or anything like that and i like making the lyric videos but mainly i've still been featured on other people's tracks and you know i help write help other people create so i still feel like i've been very active in the music world you know yeah you know so that's been it's been really cool in that sense too because i get to cook professionally and i'm still doing music not not full time professionally, but I'm still doing making professional music. If that right. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, so I that's fun. It. I love it. Yeah, I mean, I love that you do. You're doing what you love. You definitely see. You know, you look happy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I look happy. But you look good. happy. I mean, I mean, <laughs> you seem happy, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like it's it's you. You have a good head on your shoulder. You always had a good head on your shoulders, but Thank like. You. But aging through all this and going through, you know, chain, big life changes and, you know, it's good that you're in a good place mm-hmm. to continue to create and, you know, not feel like you have to do dogwood all the time. Like, yeah, and, and you and it's your choice. You know, you could do dogwood 10 years from now and put out a song, you know, if you want to, but you don't have to. And no, yeah. nobody's necessarily expecting one way or the other. I mean, sure, there's some people hounding you, but. There think... are it, these days. These days, it's more about like when are you putting stuff out of vinyl. I'm like, oh yeah. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, go, you everyone well, go for it. I don't when, care. Just do when it. you need a side job, <laughs> I'll, you'll do it. But, it is a job to like sell things. You have like anytime somebody's like just eBay it. I'm like, ah, no, what? No, that's so hard. I've tried I and I never can sell anything on eBay. We anyway. all need we all need a Michelle Herrera in our lives, you know? Yeah, we do. We do. <laughs> Shout out to my mom. It's her birthday today, actually. Ah, happy as we birthday. record this. Yeah. Nice. That's so, cool. Yeah. So speaking of which, by the way, back to yeah. chefing, hot sauce. We didn't get there. Let's go. And we can and we can come back to music, of course, and songwriting, but hot sauce. I want to get your take on mm-hmm. what your favorite mm-hmm. types of hot sauce are. Maybe you could school us on anything you might know. I don't I don't know. Sorry I didn't like prepare yeah. you for this, but No, that's fine. Because I, I have like 20 hot sauce bottles in my kitchen right now um i make them all, i make sauce all the time i ferment what, here, here I, we go what's the difference i know that there's obviously a difference but what's the main differences between like a hot sauce and a salsa mm-hmm. or something you'd get like in a dish at a mexican restaurant as opposed ah, to a bottle okay Ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch. okay yeah so a couple things is salsa in general that literally translate to sauce 
So, <laughs> so you could call it hot salsa. Hot it sauce, could be if someone says something, they might be meaning another thing. But typically, when someone says hot sauce, you're probably thinking like, you know, for example, Cholula or Tapatio, those kind of things in bottles, mm -hmm. because and so those those are shelf stable on at the grocery store. Those typically are not in their fridge right. because they they put they've put citric acid and maybe xanthan gum stuff to keep them uh, preserved. Preserved room temperature, FDA approved for to not they're not going to spoil. Some of the ones that are, that are in the fridge are those don't those typically don't have preservatives. They're going to spoil on you if you don't consume them within a week. That's probably what you're getting at the table at a, at a rest, Mexican restaurant. Um, the stuff at the taco bar at the taqueria and the salsa bar. That's that stuff's usually on ice or in a refrigerated deli case, you know, that you can scoop the kind you scoop out with the jalapenos and carrots and that kind oh, of stuff. Yeah. Love that. So so that's still fresh. They're probably not bottling that. Um, at least they they could bottle it, but it's probably not shelf stable bottling. Like they're putting it in a bottle for you to take and keep in your fridge. So all of it salsa, technically. I think more on the sauce side, that's more of like straight, non chunky, very smooth liquid. That's you know, hot liquid pouring out of a bottle. Right. Right. That's yeah. That to me is like sauce, like sriracha, cholula, those kind of things where ketchup is sauce, right? Yeah, yeah. But I love all the different sauces. I try new ones when I see them at the store. Um, I buy everything from the 69 cent bottle of the cheap Mexican stuff all the way to the, you know, something more really high end that they're selling for like 10 or $12 at the farmer's market, you know, because yeah. I know the, I usually know the people making it. And <laughs> we, we sell a couple of brands like just through our work to our two clients at weddings and, um, this guy, shout out Don Wapo. Um, you should check it out. He he. Oh, I've is, had that. Yeah, he's a he's 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 a, he's an ex pro skater. He, so he makes stuff for like Steve Caballero yeah. and all these different. I know you had Steve on urethane, and um, he makes stuff for different motocross guys and um, skaters and surfers. And the sauce is excellent. It's just he has five flavors. There's just this. I mean, he's not paying me to say this. It's just actually really really good local local sauce here in san diego and blessed to be right here on the border we got so much hot sauce to, and salsas to work oh, with yeah i, You're I in hot sauce heaven seriously seriously <laughs> just come come visit and you can just you can sleep in my hot sauce bath my buddy um, <laughs> my buddy uh my buddy scummy sent uh -huh. me some some uh don, oh, yeah. don wapo on, yeah, and yeah he has his own his own style but I, it's really good like yep. they have different styles and there was one particular one that was like i was like dude i'd, I'd take this every day drink it yeah but hot sauce bath, yeah, that's good. I my favorite uh, is Julio's mm -hmm. habanero pepper sauce. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's out of Texas. Del I have Rio. not had that. Um, there's just something about it. It's just so good. But I love uh, it. Um, I'll get uh, maybe I'll I'll send you some from Texas. Yeah. In there. Okay. Um, but yeah, Where are it's, you a, now? it's a pepper. I'm in Washington right now, so it'll wow. be a little while. But <laughs> my latest favorite uh, is uh, an MXPX inspired hot sauce from Hop Singers. Nice. Uh, and they're a company in Maryland, USA, but the the it's Aces Up Hot Sauce, and they're a very boutique kind of company. I think they locally have yeah have their stuff in stores or something like that. But I like that song too. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I I won a salsa making competition in San Francisco, um, San Francisco nice. Food Wars, and What's, and what style? <laughs> it's uh it's it's definitely like on the thicker salsa style category. Um, I won. It was a the roasted tomatillo and bell pepper sauce. Um, but there's some secrets in there because I use like, mm. you know, yeah, I can do it with um, salsa borracha, which is with beer or tequila. Yeah. Right. Or or nowadays hard seltzer or hard kombucha. That's um, that's how the, the uh, Hopzinger's MXPX hot sauce is made with beer. We sent them some Silver City IPA. Ah, yes. And they put it in there. So anyway, for, but go no, ahead. But no, yeah. no, you're right. That that So that, so depending, you did on, some depending on what th beer you put in there, and this is one of the classes I teach is, is this is making this salsa borracha is depending on what you put in there, it's going to, you know, the beer obviously adds some effervescence and bubbles and mm -hmm. flavor like that. Or what hops are in the beer could could pair well with the, the tomatillos or different things that are already in the salsa. And then what else, what else you're going to eat with it. So if you're making it specifically for chips and salsa, I do it a little different than if I'm making it specifically for like a salsa that's going on a composed dish, like a smoked pork loin or something like that, you know, um, or and this is a really thick. I make it really thick because it's got um, poblano chilies and tomatillos and bell peppers. So once it gets cold, it kind of really congeals and they they all hug each other and become one you know one unit. And then you scoop it out and it really stays on your chip. You know that's it's, why it tastes better the next day, right? 
Yes, exactly. So <laughs> it's all like so, together. So if people order from if people order like a gallon from me for like a party or whatever, I say, okay, I'm going to make it for you. You can try it now, but really tr don't eat it until the party, really, because it'll be that much better. You know, they're like, I can't wait. You know, <laughs> so but then you can loosen it up with a little more alcohol yeah. if it's if it's the borracha or whatever, and then you know you can do stuff like saute the onions and bacon fat or whatever just you can add all these little nuances of flavor just like when you're doing a song you can add little other layers of, of musicianship behind the actual song that people are hearing they're like i don't yeah. know why this sounds so big but you didn't tell them there's a bunch of violins behind the chorus or whatever you know right or, or whatever or that keyboards that's um, the secret ingredient it sounds good you know jerry finn style like you know just layer 1600 guitars behind each chorus or something um when but a long time ago uh, the wife and I were in Hawaii, and we took. Were we in Hawaii? No, we were in Mexico. We were actually in Mexico, um, and we took like a class, how to make guacamole. Nice. And so, like ever since then, I have been. I'm like, I'm kick ass at making guacamole. I know how to do this <laughs> shit. And you know, serrano peppers and like yeah. you know the you know different. And uh, everybody, anytime I make guacamole, they compliment me. You know, even my own bandmates, even Tom Wisniewski, who is a, a kind of an amateur, like, you know, chef. It's like his hobby. Is he? Hobby chef, you know. Oh, man. He's always been into cooking. Nice, but uh, Tom. He's like, yeah, this is good. This is good. You know, so I can like make the, guac, and that's it. But they're <laughs> Nothing surprised. Else. Like, Nothing they're surprised else. you're making something good. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Guac is, guac, is, uh, guac is fun because it's also kind of, it's kind of forgiving, but, like, there's very, there's snobs. Some people can be snobs about it, right? Yeah. Like, hey, you put more than three ingredients in this. It's not really guacamole. It's now it's avocado salsa or whatever. It's like, <laughs> and my whole thing with food, I mean, and music, to be honest, is like, do people like it? Yeah, you know, yeah, did, yeah, yeah. did you like it? Did you have fun making it? Did you, did people like it? Or and also, is yours better than mine? You know, mm -hmm. if you can make something better than mine, then I'll shut up. But for the if, record, if, I don't put more than I think three <laughs> or four ingredients. I don't put too much in there. That's because you learned down in Mexico. That's yeah. That, that, yeah, they don't they don't put all that stuff in there. They just like go, you know, salt, lime, avocado, serranos, maybe onions, whatever, but call it a day. Um, but you can do whatever. It's it's not there's no rules. People mm -hmm. think there's rules for culinary and for music. It's like, "Oh, that doesn't sound like your other record." I'm like, "Is it good? Do you you like it?" You know? Yeah. And I under I acknowledge that not everybody liked Dogwood or my voice or whatever or whatever the case may be i i know that that's fine with me but the people who did like it really liked it you know and yeah, yeah, exactly the, so the people who like my food are rabid fans and the people i mean the people who don't like it i just think that they haven't had it yet <laughs> they must have covid they can't they, taste <laughs> exactly <laughs> See? thank you you should do commercials for me yeah um no i mean i just think that it's like with like basically for the haters the naysayers it's like oh the, you know they didn't sound like this song or whatever it's like yeah do you expect do you expect Bad Religion to write the same song since Suffer or whatever? You know, do you expect, I mean, well, I mean, Bad Religion and Pennywise, they have a sound, right? But like do, when, when they change, people are like, oh, they're changing. It's like, do you want another bro him? Like, do you want another, you know what I mean? Like for those bands or that's just for example, but it's like, I just. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah. Actually, we, we do. Yeah, bro him. we actually do. We actually do. <laughs> okay. Bad example. Bad example. But, yeah. <laughs> but like, let, I don't know. It would just be so boring and robotic if i just kept making the same salsa since you know yeah yeah that's not a totally good example because in and out burger does it really well but like i want to change things up because i have adhd and i want to have fun you know <laughs> yeah no i i hear you yeah i like what i do because it's not the same thing every day it's not and 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 i say that as a person that likes a good routine like i mm -hmm. like a routine mm -hmm. of course you know who doesn't like sitting on the couch doing nothing <laughs> but if that's if that if you can make that your routine, right? But but I do like a routine, so it's not like I don't like to do things. But like mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So but I like to change it up quite a bit. And so songwriting, I don't want to songwrite for eight hours. Mm -hmm. I want to songwrite for like three hours. Mm -hmm. Move on, do something else, come back to it for another couple hours yeah that kind of thing and i feel like i get like bursts of momentum when i do that as opposed to just working the full full eight so i split my my eight hour work day up into like 12 14 hours that's smart yeah <laughs> so you don't well you, you also won't get bored or burned out you know you'll get reinvigorated or yeah, whatever i think so i you know 
it doesn't work for every type of, of job or, or mm -hmm. whatever vocation, but, but, um, the creative, you know, like I said, like, honestly, the more you talk about being a chef, the more it sounds like the music business where you just kind of go your own mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. you pay attention to what's going on, but you got to make your thing that you mm -hmm. make and you, yeah. and you have to also sell that thing and have a way for cl clients to get it. And so it's not just like, I made this mm -hmm. sandwich, but mm -hmm. nobody bought it. You know, it's, it's <laughs> the, that's what musicians do every day is they make a sandwich, but then nobody buys. And I'm not saying it's easy. It's it's like the worst part about being a creative is having to like turn around and figure out where to place it so people know it's there. And Oh, and totally. Can, yeah. It's offered. Here you go. Yeah. If you like it, boom. Exactly. How are you going to see this food if it's I'm only making it for this one wedding or whatever? It's like I don't have a publicist for my I mean, I mean, we have a media person, whatever, social media person. But it's like if I make somebody some really good food, I, I don't know how to get that kind of word out necessarily. But not that I really want to either. I don't I think I'm busy. We're busy enough. Like, <laughs> it'd be hard. Yeah. To, well, like I a, guess in that way, it's a little different. Right. But a create a creative. I know what you mean. Like not everybody can eat the position. same sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Um, we want to, you know. And, and, you know, as a fan, uh, as someone who's not in MXPX myself, I don't, I don't necessarily want you to write uh, teenage politics again, you know, like you did that and it's good and you write your next one was good. And then your next one and next one, and next one. And it's like, um, all these songs have a place in, in, the, in your, the annals of your history. It's like, you don't want to, unless you do like a redo or a remix or whatever, but it's like that this song is in this, at this level of the band. And then it's like, you still play some of those and you, you know, some are like, we've never played some of these or whatever. It's like, um, uh, those are, those have a special place, I think in, in people's, you know, the way they know you, the way they know me from songs or, or food or teaching or whatever. It's like, um, remember in, well, one time in 1998, we played in Omaha and you said this to me, I was like, N yes, no, I don't know. Um, obviously it had some impact or whatever, but, um, the song that I wrote when I was 17, I, I could still sing it now, but it might not have the same impact from coming from not impact, but I might not be singing it with the same, you know, perspective, emotion or perspective <laughs> yeah, that I was yeah. singing it when I was a 17 year old, you know, straight out of straight out of youth group or whatever. It's like, I, Hey, look at me. I'm not 17. I, I can sing this, but you know, here's, here's how I really feel about the world or whatever. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, a lot of the young kids say, you know, it's my truth. I have to live my truth and whatever that, you know, that thing. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I, I you kind of have to do that as a as a as an adult, I guess. Like let's let's put it nicely, as an adult songwriter, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Wait, that yeah. doesn't sound right. <laughs> At least it's not an adult. I made an adult video uh, of my adult oh, song. Yeah, but uh, I, know what you, I know what you mean. Yeah, but you know you have to be true to who you are now, right? Rather than like trying to. If I sang if I sang Swing Set Girl, I guess it's okay. But like if I wrote Swing Set Girl right now. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, it would be different. It would be weird. <laughs> no, totally. Yeah, you're not gonna exactly. That's that's exactly what I've been trying to tell people when I'm writing the Saint Didica song. It's like I don't want to write another whatever Dogwood song you expect me to write. It's like I'm not that person now. I mean, I might I might think and feel some of the some of the same things, but I already wrote that song. I don't need to write that song again. Then you can't because well not to get scientific but you know how they say your your actual cells the cells of your body die out you know mm -hmm. dead dead skin cells and stuff mm -hmm. well that happens throughout your whole body every yeah. 5 years yeah every 5 years you're a new person and somehow we retain our memories but there's a lot of memories that we don't retain you know that like i forgot about that completely but now mm -hmm. i remember it's like it's on life support back there <laughs> but it, it that trips me out just the the idea that Every yeah. five years, we're new, like our cells are regenerated. Like that's just science fiction, but yet, yeah, believe. I guess it's believable. Wow, you're so you're a therapist and a scientist now. <laughs> I'm I'm now a scientist, everyone, <laughs> Dang, and a chef, a guacamole chef. Follow the science. <laughs> I am science. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's true. Like, I mean, and hopefully, hopefully, as an artist, as a creative, you and I both are making new things. You know, we're not just stuck making the same thing. Five years after five years, we we have become new and new creatives and new creations and new cells and all this stuff because, well, that's that's our own macro evolution within our own cells. But like science tells us that that's happening. Sure. And if I'm writing the same song, if I'm writing Swing Set Girl or covering it now at this age, is that the right choice? I don't know. Like, am I am I <laughs> does that mean I haven't 
I mean, there's definitely I mean, nothing wrong with the song, people. Come on. No, no. I mean, am I still? Does that mean I'm? I am thinking, like I was way back then, or right. Right. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you from experience, like, you know, when we were on major labels or whatever, they would always, hey, you know, this is this is popular right now. You should write yeah. a song like that, and like yep. you find yourself trying to write. Okay, this could be a hit. This could be this could be popular. You know, this could be. This is a really good hook, and. You don't need to do that. I, I obviously I know now. You know you don't need to do that. It almost ruins it ruins what you're doing because if mm -hmm. you just write the best song you can write, it's going to come out really good and people are going to like it. Then of course after that, sure you can tweak the sound of it to make it more commercial or mm -hmm. more punk and less commercial, whatever it is. You know that that's a choice, but like it should never enter into the songwriting process. And I definitely you know, had, had led it a few times and mm -hmm. those songs never probably came out. We never released them, you know, cause it was just like, okay, that's not right. <laughs> you know, you just know when it's not right. Yeah. It doesn't feel right. Yeah. I mean, Oh, I mean, I guess, let me ask you like, what, what are you listening to these days? Like, what do you like and music wise, you know, like besides your own stuff, like what's, what's out there? Um, just my own stuff. No, <laughs> seriously. Okay. All right. See you later. <laughs> uh, no, that's the funny thing is I've been writing a lot of MXPX songs. Um, <laughs> That's how I've been spending most of my time. And I don't r listen to as much when I'm writing. But if I had to, if I had to like guess, it's funny because my kids, you know, my kids like put on this song. When my I have an eight year old daughter and she wanted me to put on Savage Love. Yesterday we were going to the park. Savage <laughs> Love by Jason Derulo. Uh huh. Yeah. You heard, I don't know if you know the song, yeah. but. Yeah. It's a catchy song. I'm like, wow, this is this is catchy actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it gets in your head. It's in my head now. It's gonna be in my head at two a.m. Uh, <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, things like that, I I kind of get into. That's how I discover a lot of stuff. Like my my wife will tell me about like a new Justin Bieber song, and I'll check it out. And so I'm a fan of like pop singles. Um, okay. But when it comes to like the meat of like really listening to albums, I still listen to a lot of the albums I used to. Um, yeah. Just, just, you know, Descendants, Bad Religion, mm -hmm. all that punk stuff. I st yeah. I'll still listen to that. I, I was listening to the new No Effects a little bit a um, while back. Um, I, but like I said, like I try not to listen to too much punk. Um, I don't think we're going to – don't worry. The, the, the new MXPX won't sound anything like the new No Effects. Um, <laughs> but uh, – It's got some good songwriting on it. I got to admit that that record – are you talking about the single album? um the latest release they did maybe it maybe yeah it's got some good songwriting if you really listen to the layers of the songs but i know what you mean um so so not a lot of not a lot of punk and hardcore going into your ears these days then yeah, yeah i was I, it's funny because i was i was gonna ask you the same thing so like i've checked out a few things like turnstile yeah i've checked out the album but like it's not on my playlist or anything you mm -hmm. know um mill and collins always on my playlist i have a punk playlist mm -hmm. that um has you know what slim boy last week i had them on uh slim boy oh brother and um what's loans what is what's that i've got the notes here hopeless and addicted two songs you should check out everybody should check out okay but oh brother and hopeless and addicted i think those are so good as far as punk songs and if you like mxpx it's like okay and yeah mike could have written that because it sounds kind of like MXPX, but it's not, but it's their own style. It's them. It doesn't gotcha. sound, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I love those two songs. And okay. so I get kind of hooked on things and I'll just listen to a few things over and over and yeah. over. Good. I'm, I think that's probably some mental illness, you know, <laughs> but. <laughs> no, no. You, if you like it, you like it. You know? I, yeah, exactly. You know, they were like for a while, Wallflower by Post Malone. And uh, Swahi, Swali, Swali, um, for like this was like three years ago, maybe, maybe like right in the beginning of 2020. I just probably listen to that song a thousand times. Whoa! You know, like I would listen I'm to a it huge when fan. I was when I was running. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, that's the thing. It's like I'm a fan of like certain songs. Like I don't know all Post Malone's albums or songs. I'm a, I would consider myself a fan, but. But I really only know like a, a handful of the songs, right, and, right. and I think they're really good. The ones that I like, 
same with Justin Bieber or Taylor Swift. Um, haven't heard a full album, but I've definitely heard like certain songs that all same thing. There's a couple mm -hmm. songs that I used as um, as like sleeping music. <laughs> <laughs> no offense no offense. no you know <laughs> even like even like some of her like pop songs that were upbeat it would be on like my wind down mm -hmm. wind down like playlist at night yeah um this is a couple years ago now that i'm thinking about it because like i said lately i've been songwriting so i haven't been listening to music yeah. at night but um there's another one oh allison krauss was my long time ago like 10 years ago mm -hmm. i would i would put on one of her albums um i think it's called like stay or one of the songs called stay but um i would listen to that and like after a while i got i got so like it would actually make me not sleep and i'd be listening to the song uh, i said so i had to stop that but yeah allison krauss her <laughs> voice is just so good and magical it's mm -hmm. just like oh my god but yeah like, are you I, crying are you crying no right no yeah <laughs> adele <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the new Adele? I haven't heard it. I've only heard the single, the first single. I didn't listen to it I all. Didn't, I didn't hear the whole record yet. Um, but she can, you know, she can do no wrong. She's her voice is still like at her highest. Amazing yeah. voice, yes. yes. I mean, like, and she's got. I don't know if she's writing songs herself or there's a production team, but like, just still catchy as all get out, and um, definitely. A lot of the reason why the the vinyl shipping plants were backed up is because yes. <laughs> everyone had to get in, you know they went, they probably had to use all of them to produce her records. But you know, I think she, she has a team. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, because because she the reason she's going to do well always is because she's um she's she seems nice and yeah. her her voice is so is excellent and she, um she's an amazing performer, not just yeah. singing but also telling stories yeah. and just yeah, yeah. being super. I don't know, at ease with the audience and like, you feel like, you know, her when she's talking. Uh, yeah. Um, hi, hi, Adele. Hi, hey. aunt. <laughs> my aunt over there. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So no, not a lot of punk going in your ears. That's because no, you're going to no, 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 I'm, I'm listening to a lot of punk. Honestly, like I actually really, I prefer, I prefer punk, but like, like I said, I'm not listening while I'm, I'll listen to it. Like, like I, I intake my punk through media like through like social media. Okay. Um, you know, I follow a lot of punk bands and I, you know, so I see what's going on and I, yeah. and I hear things, but I don't usually go over and like listen to it because I'm like, that's cool. I like that. I'll watch the video. Like Fat yeah. Mike sent me, uh, sent me their new video for um, Christmas. It was like Fistmas, Merry <laughs> Fistmas. You I don't can imagine know. what I don't, that's yeah, about, <laughs> but uh, so I watched the video, you know, and I, I, I want, you know, when he sent it to me and then I didn't, I didn't go over and want to listen on Apple music or Spotify or whatever. So maybe that, you know, yeah, but like I said, it's because I'm in that cycle of not, not in taking too much punk. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's, I don't know if that's good or bad, but I think it's fine. I think I, I get enough outside things in my ears to to influence mm -hmm. me in ways that i probably don't even realize so mm -hmm. no that's what, good what about you what have you been listening to oh i mean like i said the 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 the, the, the music is always blasting in the kitchens that i'm in so there's been depending so on what, everything <laughs> well it's not always everything um like the, we did a, a a party saturday night in the kitchen, I put I put on like a roller disco playlist, so there was like a lot of funk, like Roger and Zap, like more bounce to the ounce, that kind of stuff. So everyone can kind of like boogie around the kitchen. We're making fun food for the party, but um, when we're prepping, um, I I like to put on stuff that's you know, honestly, one of the new bands you said you said Turnstile, and I think they're on everybody's end of the year list uh, for last year. But like Ship Thieves is has been really one of my favorites, um, as far as like uh. They sound like hot water music, kind of. It's one of their, one of their band members is the okay. singer. Um, but I like to listen to a lot of. I do listen to a lot of hardcore and metal in the kitchen to get me. I think it really helps with my ADHD. Um, so my thoughts are not always out floating in the room. I think listening to something like Converge or Zao really puts my mind into a focus zone because it's like I hear this like constant steady beat that's comforting to me in mm -hmm. a sense. <clears throat> excuse me, and it can really put me in a zone to really look at a plate 
or a menu or whatever task I'm supposed to be doing. So I'm not thinking about other things. Um, I'm not thinking about all the other shit that has to happen as a chef. I'm thinking about the task at hand. I'm thinking about chopping the, you know, chopping these vegetables or whatever the case may be, smoking this meat, trying this whiskey, whatever. Um, because the music is helping me, helping me focus really. Um, and, let, and once I get back into a zone where I can really focus on other things, then I'll put on something like my, my no effects or melancholy playlist because I can sing along with everybody or, you know, um, I don't have to be right at the, my, at my station, sharpening my knives and, you know, really paying attention to, as much. I can just kind of check in on everybody or whatever the case may be, because I'm enjoying the experience. Like I said about that whole, all you senses kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of, there's definitely a lot of, a lot of death metal and hardcore going on. Um, but, but I, but I am, uh, I listen to a lot of punk and, and hip hop also in the kitchen. Um, and I'm not always in control of the speakers either. Sometimes if somebody else is the DJ or whatever, they'll put on their stuff. It's like a lot of 90s rap and hip hop or Midwestern emo, you know, um, stuff like that. Go. So, yeah. Um, stuff that you forgot about. You're like, oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, I met these guys one time in, in uh, yeah, Saddle Creek Records and stuff like that. So it, it's a good mix of everything, you know. And then if I'm cooking at home with my, my, my teenage kids, they're listening to like Tyler, the creator. And, you know, um, they've been getting into more 90s music, too. Like they're going through my vinyl collection. There's Nirvana and, you know, other stuff like from the from the mid, early 90s. That's you know? classic rock, Dad. Seriously. <laughs> kind of. Vintage music, baby. You know, they're, they're putting on my 90s shirts and stuff. <laughs> I always wonder what it would be like if Kurt, you know, was still alive through all this and what their music, you know, like Foo Fighters wouldn't exist. Maybe they would still exist in a way, but right, it wouldn't yeah. be the same, you know, and. Mm -hmm. It's a trip, man. Like every every one little thing changes so much in oh, yeah. life, you know. Oh yeah, crazy. And I mean, I not that that was a little thing, but <laughs> not oh, that the whole Kurt Cobain situation was a little thing. No, yeah, I know. But what you mean. no, but no. just yeah, huh? Because like I was talking about this actually on my show, but um, um, if you listen to Foo Fighters, uh, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of Nirvana. If you listen to their records. They, they have a lot of similarities in the music and the singing, you know, a lot of the song. <laughs> so then I'm like, then I'm like, wait a minute. Did Dave Grohl write a lot of the Nirvana songs or hear me out? Did Kurt inspire Dave so much that he actually just took that style and put it, the songwriting into Foo Fighters? Because you could hear a lot, of, a lot of similarities. If you know all the songs from both bands, you can like, oh, my gosh, that's directly from this or that's oh, my gosh, that sounds just like a Foo Fighters song. But if it's a Nirvana song. So I. I I felt proud when I realized that moment when I was listening to them. I was like, oh, wow, that's cool that Dave was in the band with Kurt and and that he is still writing songs. And the guitar player of the Foo Fighters was in No Use for a Name. You know, like... <laughs> yeah, the punk connection. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. All this, like, rad stuff. Um, the Foo Fighters can do no wrong. And the what it originally was the band from Sunny Day Real Estate, right? There was the... That's all right. the So, like, all these rad connections. There's no way... The Foo Fighters could be bad. You know, they got the germs. They got the no use for a name. They got the sunny day. And, you know, Alanis Morissette's drummer. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, I don't know. But that's 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 what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of food, lots of music. And I and then I put it I decided to put it on a podcast last year. That is pretty wild. Well, that's perfect, <laughs> man. So everybody can go listen to your podcast where? Everywhere? It's or... everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere. Um it's on all the plat all the platforms and stuff like that and the fam could, the family cast just the search family cast. the yeah. family cast yeah cool we're doing it and St. Data Kiss is the music and then i don't know maybe maybe you heard it here uh, Mike Carrera Josh Campbell split ep <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> but someday. i don't know someday sure someday. Uh, and it comes with a sandwich <laughs> absolutely I'll, I, yeah I'll, I'll bring the song you bring the sandwich <laughs> no, oh, that sounds like a good song title. Yeah. Um, I have a, I mean, what I, what I can also do for you and with you is I could like give you recipes to like, you know, you could pair with your music or like just put them out. You could do like some kind of video of you cooking something that related to your music. You know, if you say, Hey, I want to, I'm a, I want to, I want to say something to my vegan fans or whatever. Here's a, here's a recipe cookies or whatever that, and this song goes with it or whatever. I know. And you, do you do wine? Uh yeah, wine Anchor Valley wine. Oh okay. From I, someone mm -hmm. told me that. I was like, what? I had no idea. Um, I don't personally do it. Like I just hang out and like, you're part drink of it? it. But yeah, I'm part of it. It it it's Legionnaire clothing label became Anchor Valley wine. 
a clothing label became a wine company? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically, it was just me and me and Joe Moxley from Legionnaire partnered oh. with some other people and. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, we I, couldn't, I but we just left out. Legionnaire behind because we're like, well, we can't do both. So, I gotta check that out, man, because um, that's exactly the perfect thing for like a food and music pairing thing is you being who you are and then having your hand in a wine company. You know, like that's exactly what that's exactly the people that I'm kind of talking to on the show. You know. Yeah, so, and anybody anybody down in Southern Oregon that Anchor Valley has a wine bar, so it actually is a wine bar. Nice in nice. Jacksonville, Oregon. So Jacksonville, Oregon, and they do pairings. They do pairings. They do live music, acoustic kind of type acts and stuff like that. It's pretty fun. Heck, I could so I could so I if in that example, I would give I could give you <laughs> pairings of your music with that wine too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That'd be right. Yeah, that's really cool. So I'll check out Anchor Valley for sure. Yeah, right on. Where can people find you online, my friend? Me online. Me online. If you online. want people to find you, or you can just send them to your business, <laughs> yeah. or yeah. I'm public, yeah, baby. I'm, ain't no privacy here. Um, on my personal is Josh Kimb, and then the the I mean on Instagram, Instagram the Family Cast, and or if it's if you're looking for the music, Saint Didicus is S T Didicus D I D A C U S. Um, I mean those are the Instagram ones. Those are the kind of the main the main place I hang out. Cool. Um, you'll see my name here and there on different pe- different people's records, but mostly I'm on those those sandals and yeah, rock and roll. Dude, thanks for doing it. Of course, buddy. Love talking to you. Thanks, <laughs> Josh Kimball, everybody. Yay! Hi. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Come All right, we'll do it again. We'll talk again. Okay, bud. All right. Good luck to you. Later, you too. Peace. Bye.